And welcome everybody. It's the Tim and Christina show <laughs> live from your computer. <laughs> um, Christina and I uh, just taking the opportunity. Uh, Christina's in the uh, uh, second year. Yes. The second year uh, Master of Wine student. So we were going through um, questions and and arguments and framing and how to corral all this crap together. <laughs> so uh, here's what we're going to do today is uh, talk about final projects. Uh, any questions from uh, from Wednesdays, I'll, I'll be glad. And actually, a couple I want to go over with you, uh, Christina, just um, because it's it's germane for the whole for the whole class. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. So we're September 16th, and we're Monday evening, uh, week five. All right. So uh, the first thing, let, let me just, just quickly go over some of the things that, that we talked about market. You, you weren't on the call. I think I was alone Wednesday, right? Um, um, I think I was... The only one there Wednesday. I think it was Monday you were alone. I okay. Think. And 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 the the uh, the thing that I wanted to reinforce, uh, keeping a list of words like brand, mm -hmm. uh, words that come up frequently, that are going to require that in the context of the examination that that you immediately have how you are going to define it for the purposes of the examination. Does that make sense? Yes, so, success, you know. Yes, best. success. Yes. Exactly. Roll. <laughs> uh, yes. So, uh, so over time, remember that. And, and for everybody else, um, uh, I love words. I love, I love finding out what the etymology of words is. I discussed that on Wednesday. So. So uh, just keep that in mind in your career also when you when you're looking at you know what you do or things things about the wine industry that that you want to learn more about. Pay attention to words. Okay, so final final project. Your final project is due at the end of the course uh, on the last Wednesday is the official due date. Um, which would be three weeks from tomorrow, is that re right? Or four weeks from tomorrow, or Wednesday. Um, and I allow up to four weeks flexibility to turn your work in, okay? Mm -hmm. So to accommodate life happening um, and that kind of stuff. What you will be turning in for your final project is going to be uh, a business plan and a, a uh, cost of goods financial workup, all right? Now, the business plan and the cost of goods final, financial workup should be about the same line, all right? Mm -hmm. So, and there are many options depending on your level of expertise and what you're trying to get out of this course. Minimum requirement is just take the $25 red wine that you did on the cost of good financial calculator, play with some things, look up some more things that maybe don't, so, so constantly turn to that to look to what don't I understand, you know, learning the sequence of things, and really trying to put the tabs in the process of the calculator into this is the supply chain, this is the value chain, okay? Putting it into the business plan. Well, you no, know, into your head, ah, and especially okay. for you. So you can go, oh, boom, 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 boom. Sequential, right? right? Mm -hmm. Second, so that's that's minimum requirement. Your twenty five dollar red wine, your your um, your business plan is going to be for your twenty five dollar red wine. Uh, it could be a fanciful wine. You name it, you create it. 
whatever, or you can do a case study. A case study would be go into a store or go online, find a $25 bottle of wine that you find interesting or you might even love, might be one of your favorites or whatever. And that's gonna be the name of your final project. And you may or may not need to make any adjustments for it in your financial calculator due to where it's from and AVA and all those kind of things, all right? Um, you could do a completely new financial calculator to correspond with your business plan if you wanted to make a Snake River, Idaho Viognier, and that's your passion, then that can be your project. Um, for people in the U.S., I, I do uh, typically re recommend making it a U.S. wine, uh, but it doesn't have to be just understand the caveat there's going to be a lot more work in trying to find out, find great prices, trying to trying to figure out how to do um, uh, 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 calculations for differences in, in, um, uh, in monetary units and all that kind of stuff, uh, but it can be done. Uh, anybody who has a question about your final project that you want to run by me, do by all means. And some of you actually may be doing your final project based on a wine you are making or want to make. Okay. Now, those of you in the career development end of things, I may have said this before it bears repeating. I've had several people over, this is over the course of, of a pretty long time, 10 years now, actually apply for a job with having done a case study of one of the wines where they're applying for the job. We're going to introduce you to a, a tasting room financial calculator to see all the things that go into operating and managing a tasting room or a retail store. I've had people take that and then do a pro forma of so they can attach it there here's my cover letter here's my resume and by the way this is this is so, totally made up but here's the kind of financials i can use to run the tasting room and mm -hmm. i've actually had three people get get the job back awesome. when they never even had gotten a call back you know given online job searching and whatever so be creative after this course about how you how you can use this information all right, for your own business, for your own career and so forth. So, um, and then also several times, we're a pretty small course class this time, which has its pluses and minuses, but sometimes people get together on the Facebook page and say, hey, anybody wanna work together? And you can actually then converse back and forth. And with permission, you can even directly email if, if, if you do decide to do that. Okay. okay. All right. And remember, we're going to be working on strengths and weaknesses, opportunities and threats as our critical thinking. And then uh, as we do paperwork uh, for your framing and stuff, Christina, this will start to do this as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So the, the elements of, oops of the, this plan, uh, what's the name of the winery, and then provide a few words about it. Tell me about your winery. Um, in this phase, what's the name of the winery? What's the name of the wine? What's the total case production of the winery? And what's the total case production of this wine? Okay. Case studies are great because a lot of times somebody will find something interesting. And again, it could be a $25 red blend, but we've had people come up with examples of wines. Okay, this is total case production of my winery is 50,000. And then this wine is, you know, 10,000 or 5,000 or whatever. And then 
a question came up from this person, God, how could they sell it for this price? <laughs> and it's this little independent Napa winery called Napa Wine Cellars. Have you ever heard of Napa Wine Cellars, Christine? No, I think so, It's but it sounds generic too, so maybe not. Well, it's a <laughs> geodesic dome tasting room. It's a cool little place, but it's owned by Trincaro. <laughs> It's a little winery. So they've got all of the volume and purchasing and great yeah. resources and whatever of a 10 million yeah. cases. Yeah, that's different. Yeah. So these are, these are as, as we're doing the project, see if you can look a little deeper into stuff and, and if things don't, don't seem quite right, then it's like, well, how do they, how do they pull this off? Yeah. And ask that in the discussion forum, ask on the webinar, or if you want it addressed in the webinar, send something to me, a note, and I'll address it, okay? So the other thing is that, I don't think we've really hit this nut enough, but an MSRP, Manufacturer's Suggested Retail Price, is often a fantasy. It definitely if anybody is. ever bought the wine retail or online for the MSRP, you're stupid. Yeah, I hear you. There's a, a fun thing to do. Go into a store. Remember your homework, everybody. Go into a store and see if you can find the, the greatest oh. differential between a selling price and an MSRP. Mm -hmm. uh, there, are, there are restrictions. There are actually legal restrictions in place to help to eliminate gross mm. uh, overuse of this. And they are, are infrequently, but sometimes are, they will, the winery can be fined for saying, this, is, this wine normally sells for $99.99, but today it's $9.99 <laughs> today and every day, right? Yeah. So we found, we found uh, uh, I think the best we found so far is a $24.99 wine MSRP that sold roughly every day and, and through wine.com and, and whatever for $8.99. <laughs> Vintage was out perhaps from six vintages ago? <laughs> Maybe. Now, why would they do that? Why? I don't think they would do it on wine.com. They would dump it to like wines till sold out or something, wouldn't no, they? No, MSRP is 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 a uh, is manufacturer stated. Right, people retail. like a deal. They really love a deal. <laughs> yes, it, That's it. and and I do this and find yourself also pay attention to our own behaviors because we like to think we don't do things. <laughs> but if I'm looking at three different wines and they're all $8.99 and one normally sells for $9.99 and the other <laughs> normally sells for $15.99, psychologically, I'm going to reach for the wine that sells for $24.99. Totally. Yeah. So, so that's why this is done. And it's done with, you know, uh, uh, window blinds. 40% discount is oh, the mattresses, off yes. The top, no matter what it is. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Always so awesome. also pay attention to where these practices go on somewhere else. Now, um, so, anyways, an MSRP and an actual selling price. And in your in your cost of goods, you better be working with the average selling price or ASP, mm -hmm. right? not your own fanciful made up MSRP, unless you're, when you're pricing that wine out, that, that you're accounting for, for that differential. Mm. Because if, if you're doing a cost of goods workup based on a $24.99 price, you're stupid. <laughs> if you're yeah. gonna sell it for $8.99, what the hell happened to that? And that's per bottle. <laughs> okay. Vision, mission, and goals. If you need to look these things up, this is that's what the class is for also for additional research. A mission and statement could look like, our mission is to create a world-class wine, uh, build our winery, uh, 
<laughs> have an operation. So a mission statement is something that you actually intend to accomplish. So truly a mission statement would take out the world-class winery. We plan to build and have our winery in operation by this date. Uh, our wine's in the market, that would be a mission, something to accomplish, et cetera, et cetera. So, so in military, these are taken kind of from, um, or, or mission statement is in a military context, our plan is to go in, uh, attack this company, bomb the snot out of it, and take control of, of, the, of the government so we can protect our oil, right? Now, also, this should be your real mission statement, not your fanciful. So you might even have your real mission statement and then your mission statement to share with people in your PR and collateral materials and stuff. Right, with the sustainability and the food pairing in there. Okay. Well, that's actually going to, that, yeah, <laughs> not in that, but yeah, just we, we intended to, you know, and then you doll it up. <clears throat> um, sure. Your vision, what do, you, what do you see for the product in the future? This is uh, 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 locally distributed to a, a select handful of people, our products out in the market. Now, your own, if you're doing this on a business standpoint, your, your personal vision would be, I wanna be um, uh, greeting customers, having events at the winery, living the bucolic lifestyle of a, of a uh, successful vintner and, and uh, estate owner. Um, so anyways, this is, this is projecting in the future what, what you see about this wine in this case. Goals and objective. This is numbers and dates. So our business goal is to uh, establish enough sales and pr production and then sales. So, so now we're looking up in the mission um, to uh, sell X number of cases, have X, X amount of revenue and profit, and then you could even do it by year one, two, th or, you know, through five or 15 or whatever. Mm. So that's what I also want. You guys don't have to go crazy on this. I just want you to think and do the process. Okay. So don't think this is all the, oh my God, it's too much work. Just noodle with it. All right. Now, if it's your real business plan, don't noodle with it. <laughs> Get busy. All right. It, it's your future. So business goals and objectives are things to be accomplished, uh, uh, a, 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 a volume, a, a dollar amount, and by when, okay? Um, okay. And then what we do is we start to go into, how are you gonna allocate your time in all this? All right. And so, so you might even turn these into checks or something. I'm going to do this. I'm not going to, I'm going to outsource this. Uh, we're going to have our own maintenance team or this. I'm the winemaker or we're, you know, we're going to hire a winemaker gotcha. uh, and, and so forth. So, so this, this also is, is very relative to the size of the winery what, what you plan to do. You may plan to do none of this. I just want to sit in, in Costa Rica and get checks you know, from, from the, from the like bills, but okay. Right. Yeah. And, uh, but, but try to, try to think, okay, if I were in the business, who would be doing what? And, um, and there are, there are wineries where you go in and the, the winemakers doing the compliance and, and the paperwork and pissed off and, and nobody really knows who's doing marketing and hosting the winery tastings and tours. Well, I really wanted to do that, but boy, what a pain in the ass. And these people are schmucks and whatever. And, you know, I never wanted to be a wedding planner, all that kind of stuff. Right. Um, 
then tell me what which is your uh, production model. Are you in a state full production urban crush bulk shiners? Mm -hmm. um, and how else are you ge generating revenue, tasting room fees, events, merchandise? And when we get to that section, we'll we'll go through a whole pro forma to kind of show how necessary. You may not want to do events or sell merchandise or food or whatever, but sometimes you that's actually where you're going to make most of your money. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I've mentioned before I'm doing a, a winery search for a client in Australia. Mm -hmm. Don't open a restaurant unless that's your real passion. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. I just, I, I look at offering after offering. We've got accommodations and lodging for, for 26 <laughs> people. We've built our fabulous mansion in a state and we've got a full functioning money losing restaurant that is the biggest <laughs> thing he has to manage distraction and whatever. If you want to open a restaurant, separate it, buy the buy a lot next to it or whatever. We'll get yeah. it. I'm yeah. there we go. All right. Uh, in here again, don't need a lot of words. What's going on with the global wine market? Are we going up? Are we going down? Are we flat? Um, where do you even find that? All right, and we'll talk about resources and stuff coming up shortly. Mm -hmm. uh, start to make persona. So, so remember, we, we were talking different words mean different things to different people, right? Mm -hmm. um, personification is a process that was used in computing to actually say, okay, where, do, where does this computer live? Where, where does it go? Who's, who's purchased it? How old are they? Um, what, what kind of job do they have? How are they going to use this? What, what kind of functionalities and whatever? So a persona could be Christina, who is a master of wine student, who is, loves this industry. She lives in, where do you live again? Near, in, you're near Miami. In Miami. And, and so on and so forth. Where do, where do you shop? Yeah. When, when you go buy wine, if you're just grabbing a bottle of wine, where do you buy it? Uh, wine Watch up in Fort Lauderdale. Got it. So you go to, so Christina goes to, to specialty stores. Mm -hmm. Right. And so we explain who Christina is because we got to figure out if you're part of my market, how do I get to you? Mm -hmm. When Fred is another persona, Fred is older. He shops at Whole Foods. He values these things and, and sustainable and organic or keywords for him. You know, mm -hmm. is that part of this? Is Fred even a target given who his persona is? And so you, you start to really start to, uh, when, when we were doing products for hotels and restaurant training, we would, we would easily have 20 personas of who the staff were taking the test in, in the learning for, for the beverage training program. Uh, Different ages, some are lifers in the hospitality and service, others it's a part-time job, this person is a single mother with two kids and whatever. Where are they gonna where are they gonna fit this training into their lives? Where do they sit down and do it? Does the company mandate it? Can they do it on their spare time? If the company mandates it, now where is this persona gonna do this? Do they have yeah, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So, so this is this this can be a really fun um, uh, uh, exercise. Uh, and we're going to get into it deeply, Christina, because there are certain things that will help you juxtapose mm -hmm. when they ask these bizarre, how do I answer this? Well, if this word means this to this person, it yeah. may, may have a, an entirely different meaning to this person. Right. All right. Um, what's the market for your wine? So uh, right now, what's the total available market? Uh, or addressable market for uh, 
for Snake River, Idaho, uh, Viognier? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes this is fairly easy if it's a small area and a, a, a very specific type of wine, but if it's a Chardonnay, <laughs> now what do you do? <laughs> so we'll talk about that. Um, and then where's demand? Is, is, is it a growth item or is it a, a you know, a diving item? Mm -hmm. uh, tracking up, tracking down. Uh, and there's opportunities in both ends because certain wines, when they're tracking down, might obviate an opportunity for another product to take its place. Um, I created the Moscato boom. Moscato went from nowhere to the third largest selling white variety in the United States because I shared data with my client that White Zin was tracking down. Right. So they go, well, it's tracking down, so that, that market's going away. No, I said, they're migrating. They're going somewhere else. Hmm. They're still there. They're just not drinking White Zin. What could we, what could you offer? And my data said it was Moscato. Yeah, boom. And there, there they were. <laughs> they never went away. They just were abandoning that wine temporarily, or mm. wine temporarily. So they, it's a migration of sweet wine drinkers to cocktails, right? And then, so from from that, what's the the long term demand? And this is this is then just forecasting as best as you can, given all the all of this is if if. If your persona of your prime market target is me, your long-term growth isn't really great because people like me are dying. Retiring and have fixed incomes, that's all. <laughs> that too. <laughs> but but it yeah, so if you're so if, but no, that's it. I I mean if, if you That's have a big problem. graphic, you've got to then understand, oh, okay, well, oh, I'm going to market to younger generations. Well, you better Not come up easy. with a whole new persona, <laughs> yeah. a whole new marketing plan, because my son Landon, who's 25 years old, doesn't give one rat's ass about anything I like or want or exactly. care about. That's, that's, our big, that's our big million dollar question. There you go. Who are they and where are they going? And if, if you'll notice, there was uh, uh, some stuff in, in one of the feeds. Alcohol year that versus last year, distilled mm -hmm. alcohol cocktails and stuff, yeah. it rose 19%. Yep. That is huge. And Who are they? Yep. How do we get them? <laughs> All right. Then break down, tell me how much you're gonna sell through each of these. And you might say, you know, we're gonna sell it all in the tasting room or this or that, but give it some thought. If you're selling it in the tasting room, wouldn't you really wanna have a wine, I'm, I mean, minimum <laughs> a website with a, this and maybe take it around to some restaurants and, and direct to account and in state and whatever. Or you might be saying, you know, this is, we're going full, full boat anywhere and everywhere. Then do a competitive analysis, five wines that are, are direct competition to your product. Hmm. All right. Then you're going to say, all right, now you're selling to a wholesale distributor. You've, I've heard your pitch for what this product is and who you're selling to and whatever, but if you're selling to a distributor, why are they going to buy your wine? Oh, yeah. Ouch. yeah. And then in a store, either the distributor salesperson or you or whoever it is, why should they buy your wine? And if you're in a restaurant, what can you do for me? <laughs> and I really want you to pour it by the glass. Oh, that's great. Why don't, why don't you do this? For every case I buy, you bring me a case for free. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And then finally, why should a consumer buy? They're, they're standing at a shelf, they're looking online, what's gonna compel them? 
that makes your product unique and different. Again, not, not a whole bunch, just let me know that you're doing something here. All right, sales strategies. Um, your pricing rationale, why, why, why did you come up, including the differential between your MSRP and your selling price. Um, and then maybe a word or two about, about why, why this pricing. Um, explain the differential, and, and it could be that, uh, I'll give this one away, here's actually how this is done. MSRP is just some fantasy made up price, and, uh, and we don't have to worry about the differential because we know it's a fantasy price. Our financials, everything we do is based on what we call the average selling price, the ASP. Right. That's, okay. that's how we work. Yeah. That's the ASP. All right. So we don't have to, to account for a differential. <laughs> we still um, show it to show that you're, you know, getting a good deal. <laughs> yep. All right. Now you got a sale and you're in a restaurant or you're on the shelf. What are you going to do uh, to support that point of sale? Uh, I'm a wine buyer and I'm saying, okay, we've, we've narrowed it down to these, 20, these two $25 red blends. Okay, make my notes, licorice, and it goes with it, it's all crap. Um, that's great. Well, they're both pretty good. Uh, oh, these guys are going to reprint our, our by the glass list. So let's give it to them. Right. All right. So what are you going to do for them? Education and training. Spoiler alert. A lot of companies don't want you because <laughs> they know that you're not education, ed educating and training. You're just giving a, you're, a facade as some lame ass marketing <laughs> sales pitch. History of our wine as if you care. <laughs> and this and this and blah blah blah. And so so but there are times when it can be so 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 think about this. If you did education and training, what would you do and why? Mm -hmm. And a hint about this, I had a an incredible, incredible inside role at virtually every major hotel company around the world, from Marriott International to Ritz to you name it, because my education training was on the sales process. Right. Managing your inventory and yeah. this. How to make money, that's, that's what people wanna be educated on. That's right. How can I do something faster, bigger or better? And how can you do this? Don't fill my staff up with meaningless BS <laughs> yeah. about your... How can I your grow life. your tips? That's, that's what we're here to talk about. That's what we're here to talk about. <laughs> yeah. And make sure you know what you're talking about. Don't go in trying to, to pretend, oh, if you sell more of our wine, you know, it's more money in your pocket. They know that. And it's not your wine. It's any wine. Right. I did this, it, 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 it just a, a real quick digression on this. I was asked to do a major pitch for one of the major airlines on behalf of Behringer and our entire portfolio. And I didn't prepare well. I came out with my kind of basic spiel about the business advantage, the incentive, your bottom line, and this and that. I went up to the guy who was in charge of airlines and cruise ships and military who had brought me in. I said, there we go. What do you think? He said, and I, you blew it. Why? Why? Said, they don't sell it. They give it away for the most part. Oh, airplanes. Hmm. And the ones we had were all for business class, first class, and whatever, mm. where they give it away. Yeah, yeah. We didn't have wines. So I did not think in terms of the customer needs and, their, and how they conduct their business, and I, and I totally blew it. Oops. I did better with cruise ships, because I like to go on cruises. <laughs> that sounds pretty awesome, actually. <laughs> it is. And it can be also part of the lifestyle. You, 
here's, here's a way to do a business plan. We're going to make 10,000 cases of this. I want to sell this on cruise ships. <laughs> and, and you cannot, if there, there's a, it's a whole different channel. You've got to go to special oh, yeah. ship chandlers you, mm. that buy wines that then have to be distributed for restocking around the world. You've got to understand that business. But yeah. damn it, I do understand, and I understand the airline business now. Um, so, 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 so forget cliches, have fun, share things on the discussion forum and think a, a little bit differently about these things. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to tell you a real quick story about, uh, I, I have for, for decades been a problem solver for, for Marriott International, which mm -hmm. includes Ritz Carlton and, in the whole shebang, and now all of Starwood, right, since their merger. Yeah. I was asked uh, to go into a hotel. Uh, they were having some problems with inventory. The place was a mess. Um, and I, I, I uncovered something in my meeting with banquets and caterings. Now, 97% of the profitability of Marriott doesn't come from their outlets, doesn't come from their breakfast, lunch, and dinner restaurants, or even mm. fine dining. It comes from catering and banquets. Hmm. Hmm. You need hmm. to know these things about the customers you sell to. Okay. I go, I'm meeting with, I'm looking at their wine list. I know also that they're supposed to have certain core wines to be in compliance with the corporate program. Right. They're allowed a certain flexibility and they had a wine I had never heard of. Hmm. And it was from Alameda. And I was in San Francisco. Alameda's right across the Bay Bridge. Okay. Near Oakland. Oh. And they sold more of this wine than any of the core wines, than any wine in, in catering and banquet. I said, what the hell's the story with this? And forgive me if I'm repeating myself, but it bears repeating. They said, well, this is a guy <laughs> who came to us and said, I'll sell you my wines exclusively at this FOB, at, at this cost of goods. And, it, and, and, and I know this, this is, is hard to do because you've got to set me up as a vendor. He knew, he knew exactly yeah. all the things that would have them say no. Yeah, it's not easy. But here's what's in it for you. Here's why I think you'll find this of in. I'll, I'll, I'll get all the paperwork set up and, and, and set up as a vendor um, so that invoicing and payments uh, easy from your end. Um, and here's the price I'm going to sell you the, the wines for, line price. So it'd be a line of wines. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't want to be anywhere close to your least expensive wine. Here's the price. I think you can sell it. <laughs> I see. They said, oh, okay. No problem. So he said, he said, this is, this is, so this, these wines would, would, would give you 50% higher margin to sell. Yeah. But here's what I promise you. I will not sell these wines anywhere else in San Francisco. Exactly. And these, and your prices will actually look favorable for what we do sell them for online and in our tasting room. Mm. Slam dunk. Mm. And they're like, okay, now they're leaning forward. Then he says, and I will be your on-call winemaker. <laughs> if, if he's talking to events and catering and banquets, if you have a group that wants somebody to come in and talk about the wines, just serve my wines. Mm -hmm. I'll drive across the Bay Bridge and I'll be your on-call winemaker. Mm -hmm. Small groups, large groups, doesn't matter what. I love to do it. And he, he did. Mm -hmm. Then he said, you know what? And if ever you need a wine and the distributor's out or you get stuck or, or it's a, a short notice thing, you give us a call. I'll drive across the Bay Bridge at two o'clock in the morning aye, aye, aye. to deliver the goods because these are the kind of things you have to do if you start to go account direct. Right. Mm -hmm. They love this guy. 
every one of their banquet managers, banquet and event salespeople sit down. All right, let's talk about wine. Well, let me tell you, we could get the winemaker out. We've got this. And, and they're going, God, we're really special. The winemaker's going to come out and this and that. And then they, what's the name of the wine? And they go look it up online. They go, Jesus, they're hardly make, marking this up at all. Yeah. He, he sells 90% of his entire winery production in one hotel. It's not fair. And the rest he sells in his tasting room and whatever. So yeah. mm. that's what this is about. Know how this business works. Mm. Know that, that big wineries are offering incentives and free cases and all sorts of stuff that they, they are under large wineries and large distributors mm-hmm. have sales uh, uh, targets and, and quotas. And if you don't sell it, your, your job's on the line. Mm-hmm. And then what happens, small wineries don't understand how the game is played and and are and end up being pissed off and 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 angry bitching amongst each other with with no seeming way to to counter it there are ways if you know how to play the game mm-hmm. and if you are part of a small winery and you want to break it there are there are so many positive things that the large distributors and large wineries and their educational resources and menu printing and all these kinds of things. But there also are deceptive practices that join a winery organization and support your winery organization. Okay. So there you go. That is our lecture for today. All right. And I'm going to show you later how to how to actually use this to break down in certain parts of the exam. Okay. Cool. Awesome. All righty. So we are going to stop the share. Any questions? That's that's all I got. This has been a lot. Thank you so much. Okay. Great. All right, everybody. Have fun, and we will pick this up on Wednesday and continue our adventure into wine distribution, <laughs> marketing, and sales. Yay. Yay. Talk to you soon. Bye. Yeah.